Hi everybody and welcome to the Just a Person podcast, a show that explores life's highs, lows, and in-betweens. I'm Madison and this week I sat down with Maggie. We talked about what it was like learning English and Spanish at the same time, how her upbringing compared to her siblings, and what her heritage means to her. Thanks so much for listening and enjoy the episode. Hi Maggie. Hi. Welcome to the podcast. I'm excited to have you on. Thank you for having me. I don't have a lot of like younger, I'm not that old, but I don't have a lot of like younger people on here. Really? Yeah. And when we did Anna's episode, so you're Anna's sister, we'll get into that, but I realize I've known you almost your entire life, which is really weird. Before she got married, I did, I don't remember my life like a lot before then, but you've been in my life my whole life basically one of my fondest memories with you is when we went to the carnival together uh just me and oh you. yeah I don't know why we did that but it was just me and you <laughs> it was fun and we worked together I mean we did we, we've been through it good times good times and we're gonna I'm gonna learn more about you I, I've known you but I don't think I know any of this stuff about you that we're gonna talk about so um that'll be interesting but first are you ready for our random question I am okay you let me know if this is a good question or not. And if not, I will come up with something. I have run out of all the random questions, haven't written any more down. But I got to tell you, I just went to Taylor Swift last weekend. I saw that. I am so jealous. I will I will never get over it for as long as I live. So I have to know, what is, what's the best concert you've ever been to? Have you been to a concert? I have. Last year, I went to Pitbull. And it was the best concert I have gone to. It was so fun. The vibes were just, it was immaculate. It was immaculate. I loved it. I loved every second of it. I bet he puts on a good show. It was so fun. Like the area wasn't like that big, but it wasn't that small. So I was at the top and the view was still really good. He made everybody feel like it was a giant party in there. I bet I bet that was fun. And I feel like if you're at a concert, if you're not in the front row, like you don't want to be on the floor, you won't be able to see. Right. We were going to get floor seats, but I thought about that too, because I'm not the tallest person in the world. So I would have just gotten lost in the crowd. So I had to see if I wanted to, but it was, it still felt like a party. It was fun. But I am so jealous that you went Taylor Swift. I wanted to so bad. I know. I, I can't stop thinking about it. <laughs> I think about it every day. And it rained. That's perfect. Oh, yeah. Yeah. For the listeners, I went to uh, the night three in Nashville when it rained. There was a four hour delay and we were just all standing there packed together because there was like really bad storms going on. And then finally we went in and then it went until like almost two in the morning. Best night of my life. Completely worth it. It was so fun. But I I could talk about it for hours. So I'm going to have to cut myself off right now (laughs) because I love it. It was the it was honestly the best. It was so good. I will forever be jealous. If you didn't listen to, I think two, so at this point it will be two weeks ago when this comes out, Um, your sister Anna was on here and she talked all about, well, your parents moved here from Mexico and then you guys ended up in Michigan. You weren't born yet at that time. Um, And then we talked about her growing up and all that kind of stuff. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. So do you remember anything about, like, what is kind of the earliest stuff that you remember? Like I said, I don't remember a lot even before I met you. I know that we lived in a house prior to the house that I grew up in first. I don't remember any of that, though. I The earliest I remember would probably be, like, when she started dating her husband. And when I started getting, like, vivid, vivid pictures was probably, like, maybe a year or two before we moved um, to where I, like, spent most of my life. In Anna's, she talked about kind of like moving around a lot for different jobs and things. Do you remember that? Or once you could start remembering, was that kind of when they settled down a little bit? That was kind of when they settled down. I mean, I've only ever known my dad to be in two jobs, worked work work with two different companies and people. The one that I've most of my life in is with the person that he's working with now. So after we moved there, that's when I started like actually, I mean, getting into my life. So I don't have a lot of recollection of what Anna talked about before. Because, I mean, we are 12 years apart. Right. 
since you were so far apart, so Anna grew up only speaking Spanish until she went to school and she learned English at school. Because Anna and your you have two brothers between you, because they could speak speak English and Spanish, did you still only speak Spanish at home and you learned at school or were you learning English from them as well? At home was mainly Spanish. My parents liked it that way. They kept it that way. But when you have siblings, I mean, if you guys are off in a room doing, playing video games, watching a movie, English got brought up. So I learned English at home and Spanish at home. So learned more English when I went to school finally, but it wasn't like it was foreign to me because I had already had like a, like a, like a dip in the pool in that type of sense. But yeah, I don't, there was never really like a, like a harsh line in between both languages, which is kind of, that's kind of weird to say, but. Yeah, because for Anna, it was much more of like, it was much more like that, where it was only English at school, only Spanish at home, like kind of teaching other people English when she wasn't at school. Yeah, no, I, I learned both at the same time. Was that, I mean, you probably don't remember, was, but was that like kind of difficult? I've heard if people grow up in bilingual homes, that it can be. Kind of differentiate. Yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, I'm being completely honest. I, it, it was not hard at all for me in that. But I remember, like, obviously, when you're learning one language, the other one gets delayed a little bit. Sometimes when I got like into speaking Spanish really, really fast, I would stumble upon my English. Or when I'm speaking English really, really fast, I stumble upon my Spanish. So like, I don't, I don't think that I'm always, I'm ever going to be like 50 50 completely. There's always one that's going to be lacking. And like recently, I know that my Spanish is lacking a little bit more because I live in college and with my roommates and we just speak English all the time. And I don't speak very Spanish very much because I don't live at home anymore. Yeah. Is that confusing for you or is it hard to keep up? I, I would imagine it's harder to keep up with Spanish than English because when you're out like all day doing things, you're always speaking English. Is it hard for you to remember things in Spanish or does it come back pretty quick? It comes back quick, but there's some words that I like have to sit there and actually think about it and try to figure out what, what am I trying to say here? I think it was yesterday I was talking to my mom and I said a word in Spanish incorrectly and she was laughing about it and like making fun of me and saying, oh, it's, this is how you say it. And yeah, so one's lacking more than the other, but it's not like I, I'm un uncomfortable speaking both of them. I'm not trying to like ex like only compare you to Anna, but I'm no, just going good. based off of like her story to yours. She said she didn't really get like a lot of the American culture until she was married because she had always just lived with your parents. And you were much more involved in things like school. She you did sports and all that kind of stuff. Do you feel like growing up? Well, if you want to, you can talk a little bit about what you did. You did, but like with that, do you feel like? you kind of got to experience both cultures kind of to the fullest? I think when I started middle school was when I like completely got that more. Up until then, I was a lot of what Anna was talking about that my parents were really strict and like with the going out and stuff like that, they weren't the biggest fans of that. When middle school came around, I started pushing my boundaries a little bit more. I'm not, you know, not the nicest person in the world when it comes to my parents, but I like to push my boundaries and I did a few sports. I tried volleyball. I did that for a little bit. I did cross country. I am not a runner. I learned. Really? I didn't know all. you did that. Yeah. I try to block that out of my life. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and so I did that. And then when I got to high school, I mean, yeah, when I got to high school, I played tennis. And in between all that, I did cello. So, oh, and piano. Piano was in there too. Yeah. So I try to immerse myself in a lot of activities just because we were very grounded at home. And so I like to get out. I love talking to people. I love just having fun with my friends and just doing all that. So I did try to push my boundaries in that way, try to get out of the house a lot. And I mean, yeah, I wasn't at home very often during those years. Do you feel like you had, not that you, you weren't like things weren't strict for you, but that it was less strict than for your siblings? I think so. I did have a strict relationship with my parents. We had the, the same rules growing up with all three of us. 
they just got a little bit more lenient as the time gone like went by. I remember my sister mentioning in her podcast that she didn't get to go and like have sleepovers. And so I did, but that was way until like late middle school. And I really had to beg for that one. My parents had to go meet her parents and long extensive conversation of you got to text me when you're doing this, when you're doing that. We have the next morning I'm picking you up exactly at this time. Like it was still very, very strict, but they were lenient. And they got more lenient as the years went by. But I think that's just because they realized that like I was going to push my boundaries either way. So they just had to trust me. Did they ever have, did you ever have people over at your house or was it more they wanted you to go somewhere else? No, they actually, they preferred me to have people at my house. So if it came to a friend, they'd ask me, oh, why aren't they coming here instead of you going there? But when people, everybody was going over to this one person's house, like I would want to go, like I like didn't want to invite them all to my house or be the odd one out. I, I don't know if Anna said this in her episode or if she just said it to me. Did you ever feel like because your parents are Mexican, spoke Spanish, like you have different food, did you ever feel like kind of the odd one out in school or among your friends or not really? I did for a little bit. So my name is Maggie. But my real name is like my full name is Margarita. So growing up, I got teased a little bit because people thought that was weird. They're like, oh my gosh, Margarita, that's a drink. Like your name is a drink. And I definitely did feel weird for the first couple of years because I actually, I moved. So when my parents got, or when my dad got his new job to where they lived before, the move was a little different for me because I was the only one that was actually moving. My siblings were either out of high school or graduated or graduating that year. So I was the only one that was moving. And well, my brother was actually still in high school, but he didn't have that long to go. And I was so I was the only one that was moving and going into a school where it was prominently American kids. There was maybe one other Mexican kid there. The people just viewed me as like different. And I had to kind of like pave my way through that. So it was definitely different. But I don't think that like as there was a time in the, when high school started, when I actually started feeling more comfortable with my name and more comfortable with where I came from and started to understand my parents a little bit better with what they did and why, why they wouldn't let us sleep over and the rules that they had set for us. I guess too, because your, your siblings like didn't go before you, right? Like in that specific setting like at that school so it's not like necessarily something people maybe were used to I don't know like I guess if you go to a school with predominantly like all the people are the same when you're the odd one out it's like put the spotlight on you yeah yeah like everyone is yeah kind of focused on you even though you're I mean you're like the same as everybody else obviously but (laughs) but yeah and especially like it was in the middle of the year oh okay So it's not like you're even starting a new school with everybody else. Like you're just dropped in there and all eyes on you. Do you, um, I asked Anna this, do you prefer like any American things over Mexican things or Mexican things or like any traditions uh, from either way over the other? I honestly, I'm not, I'm not just saying it just because she said it, but we like to have fun and parties are big in Mexican culture and getting together with your families and doing all that. I do prefer that with the Mexican culture than I do American culture because I feel like American culture is a little bit more laid back. Yes, I can go to my friend's house and be comfortable there and just have a nice quiet evening there. But sometimes you just need that sense of fun, that sense of, oh my gosh, I'm with these people that I grew up having backyard like barbecues together with and it's just fun to have like that party do you want to talk about your big party your quinceanera because that was so I was there for that one that was so fun I had so much fun so I had my quinceanera like I'm 20 so that's five years ago that was probably one of the funnest nights of my life I think Anna spoke a little bit about it but we were very sheltered. So at that point in my life, I still had a like a, I want to say a book, but like a, a set of rules that we had to follow. And we had been exposed to like the big parties like that with everybody else. But that day was just about you. 
like that day was curated and it was a literal spotlight supposed to be on you we got to pick out like our dresses our cake the we had to have like I had damas in mind which were like my like my ladies and they're all my friends and we got to dance all night and we had at that point we had like a sprinter van it was like a party bus van and so we got to do that and being from a family that didn't let you like like I said before like go hang out at friends' houses and have like the late night. I have like a bedtime at 10 o'clock. I had to be home at 10 o'clock. That one, we stayed up till like 1 a.m. And we just got to have fun. And so that was like my first taste of like, I want to say freedom, but a little bit of freedom and like what life could be. It was a transition. And I think after my quinceanera, that's when I fully started to indulge in my life and actually like get out there a little bit more. Yeah, that was a good time. Um, So going from there, so you graduated high school and then you started going to college. You went away to college. What was that like? I can imagine. I mean, sure, you like things were maybe a little bit loosened up after your quinceanera, but like even just regularly going to college is like such a big change and coming from someone that didn't necessarily get out of the house like all the time. What was that like? It was a culture shock. I could go out and not have to ask my parents. I mean, I still called my mom and said, hey, mom, I'm going out. Or, hey, mom, I'm doing this. But I didn't have to make plans a week before. I didn't have to, like, basically ask for permission. It was, I love college. (laughs) I am two years in. I still have two to go. And it's probably the greatest part of my life thus far. It was a little bit difficult though because of the fact that we were sheltered a little bit because you go from having your parents 24 7 to being so far away from your parents there was lots of tears and it was very very hard I think Anna said this but my parents moved away so last year I think last summer they um moved away like 14 hours away I'm actually here right now with them but Having my parents away for like an hour away from me, like they were when I first started college to now 14 hours away from me, it's difficult. And even though I love the freedom that college gives me and I love being independent, it's still sad because like I do miss my parents and I do see like everything that they did for us. So you can kind of miss them a little bit. Now, a big thing for your sister, and I'd be curious about your brothers too, but was uh translating and i'm not sure it's it's hard to tell like if a lot of it fell on anna just because she was the oldest but um did you do that a lot for your parents i'm sure they had learned more english by the time you were born and so like what is kind of your relationship with translating well when my sister got married and she moved out a lot of those responsibilities came on me so the doctors would visit the phone calls to the doctor's office, the phone calls to legal like places that came on me. It wasn't as daunting as it was for Anna. And I will say that like I did have to do a quite a bit of translating, but I didn't really mind it because I like I could see that my parents were trying and my dad at that point, he my dad's pretty fluent in English, I would say. Um he can carry a conversation without even blinking an eye my mom has a little bit more trouble with it right now she knows a lot more and she can definitely carry a conversation by herself but it takes a little bit of thought and it's a little bit more hard for her than it's for my dad so by the time it got for me to do all the translating stuff it wasn't that bad but it's still like a it's a responsibility issue that I don't think that a lot of like American families really think about because like if you were to go to like a pharmacy and ask for a prescription, like it's just rolls out your tongue. Well, if she has to go to a pharmacy and ask for her prescription, she has to have me there to say, hey, can I get this prescription? So yeah, it was, I still had to deal with it, but I wouldn't say it was like much compared to what Anna had to deal with it. Was it overwhelming for you? Because you wouldn't have been that much older than Anna was because like when she moved out, you were what, like seven probably or like eight? They've been married for 10 years? 
Okay, so 10. I guess that is a bit older, but still, like, to be doing that, like, when you're a kid, was that scary to have to translate, like, doctor, like, legal documents, doctor stuff? Because it is serious. 100%. Because if you get one word wrong, you translate one word wrong, it changes the whole meaning of the document, the whole meaning of the medicine. Like, one medicine can completely change somebody's health. So, it was scary. Like... My mom struggles a lot with um, her health right now, and she just has problems that she's had for many years. So the list of medicines that she takes is extremely long. And to call to the pharmacy and say, say, hey, like, she's out of this. If you say the wrong, like, medicine, like, she's done with the medicine. She doesn't have any more. So it's like when you're going to the doctor. So if you're, th- if I'm thinking like for me, when I was a kid and I didn't feel good, I would go to the doctor and I would just sit there and my mom would take care of everything. But when you're sick or if, like you said, like if your mom is sick and you're like 10, you're going to the doctor and having, yeah, it's almost like uh, she was just, or like whoever was bringing you was just bringing you there. And then you were like handling it, but you were a little kid, which is interesting. Yeah. Like that's not something I've ever had to deal with. Yeah. It. It's a challenge, but I mean, if we would, the roles were rever- like reverse, like I I understand it. Right. Yeah. No, this I'm not saying that to be like. Oh yeah. Something bad about your parents. No, so I'm I just know. Saying like, like yeah, that's something definitely. If you're just if like someone just like me, like I I never thought about that, but yeah, little ki- I'm sure still like little kids have to do that all the time. Yeah, it's it's insane. <laughs> definitely not as much as Anna, but it's still it was still there. Did you ever have to do like she did where it was like not your family, but just other people that you had to help in situations like that? I didn't have to um, like that. The only time I had to, I think, was in middle school. A new person came in and he didn't speak any English at all. I had to help him take a test. Like I had to proctor the test for him. I was in middle school. That was kind of weird. A middle school proctor. (laughs) Yeah, I was a middle school proctor. I had to read to him in Spanish. And that was a little weird, but I don't think I had to actually like translate fully for somebody else that wasn't my family. I don't know if you're doing this this year, but for a long time you were working somewhere where you, that's what you were doing was like translating documents for migrant workers, basically. Duh, yeah, that, I still do that. Yeah, I'm still doing that this year. I, I'm a, like a hiring person at where I work. So these immigrants in these Spanish speaking families, they come in and I have to basically do their application for them. And if anything needs to be tra- like translated to English, I'll do that to communicate with the rest of my bosses. But yeah, I still do that. Do you like doing that? Or is it like you just do it because it's like just a summer job? Or do you like is translating not like as a professional thing, but like just something you'd like to do? in the future or is it just you just do it I I love my job I really do I don't mind it um I don't think I'd want to do translating like just strictly translating the reason I love my job is because it's not just strictly translating there's other parts to it but if it was just strictly translating I don't know if I'd like it as much just because a lot of things do get caught up in holes and they get pushed through the cracks and if you get something wrong it's like I said, a different meaning to what you're talking about. So it's, I don't know if I'd want to have that burden on me. Oh, do, does it feel like people expect you to translate or is it just kind of like, like if you, maybe it's different because you're a bit younger, but if you were to work somewhere, do you feel like people put it on you that you have to, you have to do that? I actually like make it known that I speak Spanish when okay. I get So any job that I've ever applied to or ever, have like been in I make it known hey I speak Spanish just because I know that that gives me a little bit of a leg up and I use it to my advantage just because I know that like I have the assets that it, like that they're requiring for you to have but if it comes down to somebody else than me like I can speak Spanish like I I like doing it so I don't really take it as a burden if anybody asks me to translate it I just because I, I like I, I don't know if it comes down to seeing my parents with it if somebody were if my parents were the ones trying to get information from somewhere and they need a translator I'd want somebody to give them a translator too yeah that makes sense because Anna said for her it was like 
when she was like five people were like forcing her to do yeah, that's insane. And I, think, I think it just like scarred her from <laughs> like she the pressure of being a child and having to translate people's documents I think it was just like <laughs> it was a lot yeah kudos to her because I could not do that when I was her age but it's good that you have like a, a healthier relationship with that yeah yeah so I asked Anna if there was anything she wanted me to ask you that she would want to know about. This was all <laughs> This was all she said. She was most interested in what it was like for you to grow up with a sibling 12 years older than you. All your siblings are older than you. You're the youngest. Um, what was that like? And did you feel like at one point you were an only child because you're the only one at home? Okay. Uh, <laughs> I... It was weird because we are so far apart in age, especially me and Anna, where I think we're probably the closest out of all my siblings and we're the ones with the biggest age gap. So it was definitely weird because when I went like to school and talked to my friends, all their siblings, they were so, I don't know, they talked about their siblings like they were in two different worlds. And even though my siblings I and I had like an age gap, like, I still think that we were all pretty close. I don't know if that was because of the way that we were raised, but I mean, I can have a conversation with any of my siblings and it can feel like we haven't. It's not like we've not talked in months or whatever, but I did feel like an only child at some point because I was just the only one at home for about, let's see, I want to say like the majority of my high school career. I was alone like it was just me and my parents and I'm my siblings weren't there they were off either at college married or doing their own thing so I didn't really have to like compete with somebody like oh hey I want the last piece of chocolate now I'll just take it you know but yeah I don't know that was that's a good question I was like well we like I talked to her about all kinds of stuff and I was like and and we talked about a ton of stuff, just not even like during the interview, but just talking about stuff. And I was like, is there anything you want me to ask? That was it. She just wanted to know. That was it. Out of all the questions she could have asked, that was the juiciest one she could have come up with. And she she was like really interested to see, which we already talked about, but because obviously your parents were less strict with you compared to Anna. And I don't know about your brothers, but they were still strict with you, but it was less. And so she wanted to kind of hear about that comparison, which we already talked about. I think in her mind, you got it like super easy. <laughs> oh, I know. I've had conversations with her and she thinks I'm like the most unhinged kid ever <laughs> yeah. because she thinks I live like the craziest life and I get to do all these things and she didn't get to do them. I think a lot of it is just like as time progressed, my parents could either like afford or they could just provide a different lifestyle for like 12 years apart and they gave what they could when they had her and they gave what they could when they had me and it's a little different I will give it to her it's very different but I don't think I lived that extremely different of a life compared to her that might just be my eyes but yeah I don't know I feel like a lot of the reason too is that when I moved out to college, I actually moved out to college and I'm like living at college and I don't think she got that. So I think the things that she sees me do and she just didn't do because of the fact that I'm just away and I get to make my own decisions. And I do live a little, little unhinged life, but I think <laughs> it's fun. And, you know, I'm only going to be in my 20s for once. So got to live with them. Yeah, I'm with you. Um, what is it? I guess this would be a difference between you two is that you get to go to Mexico. Oh, yeah. What does that mean to you to be able to go back to where your parents are from and see your family that's still there? It means so much to me, it, especially like seeing I've gone with my dad twice. So my dad and then I took my best friend both times. Just seeing where my like dad grew up and just like seeing him talk about like his stories there and like what he did and oh my gosh that same mango tree is in the same corner since when I was a little kid and that's so like meaningful to me and just to see like where they've come from where they began it's insane because I don't think like 
before I went to Mexico, like I understood a little bit about like what they went through. But after I went, I feel like that just gives you a big eye opener. Like they do so much they can for us. And a lot of the stuff that they do for us, they do because they worked hard for it. And just seeing that progression of like their life is I'm so thankful for. And plus it's vacation and vacation's fun. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> No, I think it's really cool because I think it's it's so easy to like like for it would be so easy for them to come here and just like abandon all of, like their culture and their family's traditions and just try to fit in here and like forget about it. But I think it's cool you guys all like you bring you've brought like your culture to my family. And so now we do like different things that you guys might have done just like from your like br- I don't know, like it's cool to bring them both together and see just see what happens with it I think it's so neat being able to see everything blend because I mean when there was such a separation when we were younger to like see that evolve to now that I can enjoy both the American side and the Mexican side without like having it clash it's just so neat to see I like it. I feel like I learn a lot from you guys, like just about different, th- I, especially Anna, like I'm with Anna all the time, like just being able to learn things and like, even like Anna, just seeing how she can like blend food together. I don't know. It's just really cool to me to be able to learn about those things and like in a way that I would never, I wouldn't, you can't just like figure that out on your own, like to be able to see things in action, I think is cool. I think seeing Anna do that with you guys like it's given me like a different perspective too I think that helped that was part of the reason that it was so easy to like blend where I came from with like all my friends too because I've seen an example of how she does it and kudos to her is there anything that we did not talk about that you wanted to talk about I don't know I think we had a lot (laughs) is there anything else you want to know I'm trying to think I don't know it just like it does like really fascinate me, especially because around here we have like, uh, or like in the town that I'm from, I don't know about where you guys ended up living, like where you spent a lot of time, but there is such a large population of people from like Mexico, it di- just different areas down there um, that they come up here and work. Well, there's a lot of migrant workers, but there's also a lot of like permanent um, families here that have um, immigrated, but uh I don't know what I was saying oh I think it's just like interesting to be able to get like a better look at their lives through you guys or like where it just to get a better perspective on where they're coming from and like you said like you just want to help people translate because your parents may need help sometimes like you know and you don't always think about that in the moment of when something's happening but I think it does just give you a better perspective and so that's why I've really enjoyed talking to both you and Anna about this kind of stuff because it's just something you don't ever think or talk about right yeah no I I mean honestly before this conversation I don't really think about that either I just like no I just live my life but like when you actually sit down and think about it you're like dang like life has really evolved like everything's changing around you and like learning how to change with it it's like It's a big gulp to swallow, but yeah, I feel like, I mean, times are better now, I guess. And I don't know. I, I like, I like the changes that are happening, like the, the Mexican community is growing all around and I think that's something really beautiful to see. And also like, it will always be incredibly impressive to me that you guys were like five years old speaking two languages. Like I can't even (laughs) comprehend how little kids can do that that's so crazy I see it now and I'm like how did I even do that it's (laughs) insane it's completely insane like the Spanish immersion schools like the programs you're talking with a little five-year-old six-year-old and they know the complete sentences in Spanish and you're having a full-on conversation with them like that's so weird that's so weird to me my last question for you is a question I ask everybody. What is your advice for someone who, I mean, it could be someone that's, you know, younger, uh, not like a lot of young people listen to this podcast, but uh, just, I don't know, maybe there's someone out there that's kind of struggling with 
how we talked about like blending the cultures together or I, I could imagine if you come from like your home life is a different culture than what you're seeing when you're at school. I can imagine that that can be confusing and difficult. Uh, what would be your advice for someone going through that? I say savor it because you're going to grow up and you're going to eventually start doing things how you want to do them and like live your life differently than you probably did before and it's so weird to think about it now but like when you look at it when you look back at it you're gonna think that you missed that that part of your life so like even if you're a little different than somebody else even if you're different than your friends or the school you go to or the community you're in embrace it that's what makes you unique I know it's cliche but that's what makes you unique and I mean, you're not going to stand out if you're like everybody else. So embrace it and savor the time you have right now. Beautiful. (laughs) Thank you. Uh, Thank you so much for being on here. I had a great time learning about your life as someone who has seen you grow up and now like you're a full full grown adult, like just to hear what you've been through. I don't know. It's very interesting. Thank you. And I appreciate you having me on here. All right. We'll talk to you later. All right, see ya. Thanks so much again to Maggie for being on the show this week. If you have a story you want to personally share on the show, want to be read on air, or a topic you'd like to see discussed, find us on Instagram and Facebook at JustAPersonPod, or send us an email at JustAPersonPod at gmail.com. And we'll see you next Monday with another new episode.